This is the BC610E transmitter from World War II, designed and built in the Halicrafters factory. I restored this transmitter. This is the control panel with all the metering and the plate tuning control. It's got a three band selector so that you can uh, pre tune the exciter for 160, 80, and 40 meters. And uh, with the flick of that switch, the exciter is already tuned up, so all you have to do is change the tank coil, tune it, and you're on the air. This is the uh, power control panel to select CW or phone. The phone position is supposed to lower the high voltage. I've kept it up at the CW level and it also shorts uh, the CW position shorts the secondary of the modulation transformer. Beautiful uh, old-fashioned uh, rocker switches and filament voltage and modulator bias can be adjusted. There are large rheostats and then the fuses and of course the transmitters on casters it weighs 400 and 410 pounds or so. I've got a uh, Johnson Viking VFO to drive the, the transmitter with. And if you go around the back, there's the power supply down on the bottom with a pair of 866 uh, mercury vapor rectifiers. Uh, this is a uh, choke input power supply and uh, on the, in the CW position it's 2500 volts under load and in the phone position without the modification that I've put in the voltage drops to 2000 volts under load. Then the middle deck is the modulator deck that also contains the uh, transmit receive relay which is basically the uh, primary of the uh, power transformer, the plate transformer is controlled by that relay and there's a, a heating element you've seen those cone heaters, those radiant cone heaters, well this basically is used as a resistor to put in the series with the primary of that transformer uh, to lower the voltage to about a thousand volts when you're tuning up the transmitter so that you don't damage the uh, final amplifier. Those are the 100 TH modulator tubes, class B push-pull with the modulation transformer in there. Beautiful heavy iron. This is what makes a real old-fashioned transmitter. A pair of 2A3s. I'm not happy with the driver of the 100 THs. It really does not provide enough power and low enough impedance to drive the 100 THs without distorting the waveform. So that's why I've got these clip leads on the grids of the 100 THs and they go to my kilowatt rack where I've got a beautiful uh, uh, 283 uh, driver with very low impedance, has a different kind of driver transformer. So uh, yeah, and there's the relay, the uh, transmit receive relay for the um, shorting the modulation transformer uh, secondary in CW position and also to change the bias or remove the bias uh, from the modulator tubes a, a very high bias when you're in the CW position there's a bleeder resistor in there for adjusting those tap points and then the uh, upper deck you can't really see it right now, I gotta open the door And here is the uh, the tank coil and the tuning capacitor for the plate circuit of the 250th tube, which you can see in there, um, glass tube. And I, I'm going to turn on the power actually, so that you can uh, see the filament glowing. So we're just going to turn on the main power. Okay, this is what it looks like when it's. Uh, turned on. You can see the 100 TH is beautifully glowing and the 250 TH which is sitting in, in there on the top deck, the exciter and uh, PA. And the other door Is the exciter and you can see the tuning units in here let's do it the right way around so these are the three tuning units which correspond with the three positions on the band selector switch so you can pre-tune these uh, 
they're basically a 6L6, a 6V6 oscillator or a buffer if you're using the external VFO, a 6L6 driver or pre-driver, and then uh, and a doubler. It actually does double the signals, and then a pair of 807s, which uh, are the driver for the 250TH, which is back there. Okay. So uh, you can pre-tune this. I've got a crystal in the middle. This is the 80 meter tuning unit here. And I've got a crystal on uh, 3885 kilohertz. So yeah, and then on this side, you've got the voltage regulators. If I just turn on the high voltage protect, just to make sure I don't damage anything. And um, we'll just apply uh, the exciter for now. So you can see the exciter current set at 100 milliamps. You can see the voltage regulator tubes glowing purple. Okay. Um, so we're, we're on the protect side, so that won't damage anything. Let's just see what happens. Ah, when the door is open, any doors open, the uh, primary relay will not operate so that you can't get plate voltage from the, uh, that's a good safety feature. So you don't get a shock by putting your hands in there. So let's try it again. There we go. And we'll dip the plate. See? Just tuning here. There, it's dipped 100 mils or so. And uh, now we go to the high, we'll take off the high voltage protect. And now we're putting out the full power. And uh, you can see the RF ammeter showing almost three amperes of RF current in a 50 ohm dummy load. So you can calculate the power on that. And uh, there's a barely perceptible reddish glow on the 100 THs. The mercury vapor tubes are glowing purple. And there's a very dull orange color on the 250 TH. And that's it. Transmitter's loaded light nicely. I can probably increase the loading a little bit. There. 250 mils, make sure it's dipped. That will give us a little bit more plate color on the 250TH in there. So there you have it. A World War II Halocrafters BC610 Model E transmitter it was used at Pearl Harbor to contact the mainland of the United States when it was attacked. December 7th, 1941. And it was used in the Battle of Midway in the Pacific. So this particular unit has a lot of history. The Halocrafters BC-610E.